Uh, yeah. All right. Thanks. Uh, yes. Thanks, Mukta. So I uh, just wanted to also say before I just introduce the uh, uh, Global Tapestry of Alternatives, uh, the GTA is one of the co-organizers of this uh, webinar. There's also Ecoversities, uh, EduSeer Alliance, uh, Pedagog, uh, the Radical Ecological Democracy Alternatives Project, and the Wellbeing Economy Alliance. This is co-organized by all of us. Uh, quickly about the global tapestry. Uh, this is um, this is a process that started a few years back as an attempt to try and weave together initiatives, alternative movements across the world. In the context of the multiple global crises that we face, which all of you are familiar with, so I'm not going to go into any detail. Uh, and these are, as we know, of course, crises that are intersecting with each other and affecting us right from uh, each one of us individually to, to the globe as a whole. And in the face of these, uh, in the context of these crises, one of the questions that uh, many of us have been asking ourselves is, is there other alternatives? Can we move towards a way of living with the earth and with each other, which does not cause the kind of ecological collapse and social inequalities and deprivation that are part of the crises we're talking about? And we feel that there are two kinds of alternatives. One is resistance, popular peoples and community resistance across the world, where people are saying enough is enough. We don't want this form of development or economic growth or domination or various structures of exploitation like the ones you see on the slide here. We want to have um, either sustain uh, old ways of relating to the rest of nature and each other or create new ones which are much more uh, towards justice and peace and coexistence. Along with the movements of resistance, we also have some incredible movements of constructive alternatives of meeting human needs and aspirations without trashing the earth and without causing the kind of inequalities that we otherwise see. Uh, there are tens of thousands of these uh, across, across the world. And what we're trying to do through the global tapestry is to connect these various different radical alternatives across the world uh, to be able to learn from each other, to collaborate, to do joint actions, to visualize and vision a uh, collective uh, uh, just world, what could it look like and what are the pathways of getting there. Um, just quickly about the GTA itself, it's not an organization, it's not an attempt to try and create one super organization above all the others. It's basically a process, it's a platform to bring us together, to do it horizontally without hierarchies, uh, which is why we call it weaving. Um, we have a, a sort of a rough structure where there is a assembly that consists of what we call weavers, which I'll explain in a minute, endorsers, and uh, some of us who are part of a facilitation team. The weavers, which are really one of the most important components of the GTA are networks, national or regional, currently in Mexico, India, Colombia, and Southeast Asia, but many more hopefully coming up in other parts of the world, which are uh, already weaving together, networking, bringing together grounded uh, initiatives uh, across these regions in communities, indigenous peoples, civil society organizations, etc., on many different aspects. The endorsers are uh, regional or global networks and organizations which basically agree with the spirit and the objectives of the global tapestry and collaborate uh, at various points in time on different kinds of subjects. This is uh, an almost complete list of the currently the current endorsers of the GTA. In terms of activities, there are many different things that are happening through this and also in collaboration with other groups, including the ones that are co-organizing this webinar. Um, there's a meta mapping of the alternatives. There's a periodical that comes out every uh, two months, which has um, perspective pieces, news from around the world on, on radical alternatives. Um, there are There's a compilation of resilient stories. This was started during the COVID pandemic, but also is now extended to other kinds of crises and how communities are attempting to be resilient in the form, in the face of these crises. We had during the COVID pandemic, um, uh, over the last few years, also a series of webinars, which includes this series that this is part of, but also um, giving a voice to communities and people across the world on how they are thriving or coping in the face of crises. There are dialogues, cross-cultural, cross-geographic dialogues amongst weavers and endorsers, uh, trying to learn from each other, create more possibilities of collaboration and collective action. 
And these are really exciting because, as we know, uh, across cultures, the sort of diversity of perspectives that people have, uh, how can we, we bring these together? This is the periodical, which I already mentioned, and then stories of community uh, resilience and regeneration in different parts of the world. The mapping uh, is currently of the weavers and the endorsers, but we will be adding more and more layers to this uh, global mapping of alternatives, and especially alternative works and plans. Um, we also have uh, uh, sort of a something that was an offshoot of the GTA called Pedagog, which is also now co-organizing this webinar, which is a global group of about, I think, 140, 150 uh, activists, academics, people who are working at the moment at the so-called higher education level, trying to create alternative pedagogies, alternative courses, uh, things that people don't normally learn in the conventional colleges, universities. Um, there is also a second process that the GTA helped to start, which is to build collaboration across seven or eight, six or seven different global processes to see what are the synergies, how can we work together, how can we again become more of a critical mass to for affecting uh, local to global transformations. So that's very quickly what the GTA is about. There's much more on this website, which you will find. And um, uh, we are looking forward to many more collaborations across the globe for the kinds of transformations that we all want. Thank you. Thanks. And with that, I'm going to pass it on to, to Ashik um, for uh, moderating, introducing and moderating the session. Ashik, maybe you can also, I think uh, Mukda gave a brief introduction to Travels University, but you can go further into that. Over to you, Ashik. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ashish, and for that introduction of GTA. Um, at Travelers University, we too are happy to be part of uh, the Weaver process in India through Vikat Sangam. Yes, uh, to begin with, uh, at Travelers University, uh, we believe in an education where the learner connects with their own self, with communities around, and the rest of nature. Uh, so we see that connecting with oneself is integral to uh, building one's personal well-being. Connecting with communities is integral to social well-being. And connecting with the rest of nature is integral to ecological well-being. Uh, so the aspects of personal, social, and ecological well-being, uh, that is what uh, we facilitate through uh, Travelers University. And uh, I would like to share a bit more about you through the logo in itself. Um, so here we see uh, a group of uh, people uh, and the presence of backpacks indicates that learners have come to meet with people to directly learn from them. Um, and the element of uh, being in harmony with the rest of nature because we draw our nourishment and shelter from uh, the nature. Um, and uh, the people are sitting here in circles, uh, which means that uh, the power is not concentrated with any one individual or a few people, that uh, power is distributed among people or, uh, or that it is at the center for everyone to access. Uh, Yes, uh, so uh, at Travelers University, uh, we, uh, in through in each of the programs, uh, the three elements or aspects that we uh, cover or facilitate are connection with one, one's own self, connection with communities, and connection with the rest of nature. Uh, we see that uh, the dominant model of education, uh, it is built on scarcity, uh, like the idea it communicates is the scarcity of resources and uh, and that people have to accumulate, gather, access more. Uh, but such uh, a model also um, uh, kills uh, the joy of uh, creativity or of imagination or of curiosity. Uh, and, and also like further isolates people from uh, communities or uh, people around. So, like, can can learning can uh, people experience abundance, uh, abundance of relationships, abundance of resources, and abundance of experiences? Uh, and this is what this is what we offer through Travis University. Uh, 
Um, and the compass here is that about direction, having a or building a sense of direction rather than uh, finding the destination. Uh, so for us, the pedagogies include uh, like primarily travel and uh, through travel experiential learning. So we see that like as learners, as we engage in travel, uh, we uh, gain exposure to different things that leads to nudging reflection, which brings us to feeling connection. Uh, so by exposure to difference, uh, we mean that uh, we meet with communities, individuals, collectives, people who are uh, working towards a more sustainable, equitable, and just world. Uh, and uh, these kind of work are usually otherwise not part of our mainstream discourse or mainstream um, media or communication. Uh, and as we as we are aware about uh, the different or the plural ways of being and doing that uh, that help us uh, move towards a more inclusive and just world that helps us connect with more people, that helps us uh, empathize uh, with uh, more people, that helps us see our own uh, within ourselves. Because as because through these experiences, we have our processes of um, how, how do we, how do we relate to these experiences? Uh, like uh, a very deep reflective process uh, that helps us in seeing the interconnections between sectors. Uh, Ashish to earlier shared about how uh, the different areas are interconnected and it's the same uh, intersections between uh, say ecology, education, economics, social justice and well-being and polit uh, direct democracy politics. These are the kind of interconnections that we try to uh, bring in uh, through each of the programs. And through that experience in the connection, connection with oneself, community, and the rest of nature. Uh, and one idea that is like central to each of the exploration is the idea of a livelihoods. Uh, livelihoods that help us feel alive or experience aliveness uh, as, as individuals, as communities, and as, as uh, a planet. So livelihoods that are oriented towards social, ecological, and personal well-being. So each so in each of the learning programs, we meet with individuals and communities who are practicing livelihoods, and we directly learn from them. Uh, so how does some of these programs look like? Uh, so one kind of one set of programs are uh, the learning journeys or the yatras. Um, So uh, yatra is a Hindi uh, is, is an Indian term. It's 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 almost there in like in many of the Indian languages. Uh, it uh, generally means a pilgrimage to sacred places, uh, where uh, the journey itself is important as much as the destination, and uh, the process of travel uh, serve as an act of devotion to themselves. So at Travelers University, we design modern day yatras where uh, the people and communities whom we meet are those who practice uh, different uh, livelihoods. And it is in the, uh, there are in, in, in several themes such as human river interconnectedness uh, in the theme of Swaraj or self-rule or self-governance um, in the theme of uh, reimagining economics and so on. So one such uh, yatra uh, we organize is the Nila Yatra. So Nila is, uh, one of the longest rivers in Kerala, uh, the state the, uh, that I am from, the southern state of India. And uh, with, with Nila Yatra, we primarily explore the human river interconnectedness. So there are several communities whose lives and livelihoods are directly uh, linked to the river. Uh, like, for example, uh, the Potter community uh, who are in uh, support. So and uh, they have an interesting history also to tell. Uh, so the Porter communities uh, who live uh, along the river Nila, they collect uh, their clay like four meters away from the bank of the river and so on. Uh, but then uh, we look into the history of uh, uh, the, uh, the community. They are originally from uh, another state, uh, which is again in the southern part of uh, the country. Uh, but about like nine generations ago, as they faced an extreme drought and couldn't continue their livelihood ahead, they started traveling together as a community. 
So they traveled through uh, three different states in southern India and settled along the banks of River Nila in Kerala because good clay was available. There was a forest nearby. So to bake the uh, pots, uh, one uh, they required wood. Clean water was available in plenty. And uh, so that's how they settled over there. And uh, the language that they speak among themselves, uh, it has words from multiple uh, South Indian languages, including uh, Telugu, Kannada, Tamil, Tulu, uh, and Mal Punkini and Malayalam. Um, but it hasn't got a script. Uh, to us, like we, uh, they speak in Malayalam, the local language, uh, because they are bo obviously born and brought up here. Uh, but the community has like holds that that rich heritage and culture or uh, cultural experience. Um, and one challenge this particular community faced today is, is with respect to uh, finding good clay. And uh, that is due to uh, the leaching of chemicals uh, in the uh, in, in the soil, uh, because the the model of agriculture uh, over the last 40, 50 years have been predominantly chemical intensive, um, intense use of chemical based pesticides and fertilizers. Uh, the, uh, the leaching uh, and, the, and these chemicals leaching into soil has affected the quality of the clay that they, uh, that they use. Uh, so it is to be seen that like something that was introduced, the introduction of chemical fertilizers was uh, said to be for supporting uh, like one particular livelihood of agriculture. Uh, we see that has not only affected that particular livelihood, uh, it has also affected like other livelihoods. Uh, so it is it is uh, these interconnections uh, that we uh, bring in through uh, such such journeys, uh, and uh, the banks of River Nila are, are also home to several other crafts such as um, handloom weaving of clothes, uh, hand weaving of grass mats. Uh, and to our understanding, this is a very large community in Kerala who hand weaves grass mats. Uh, and uh, these mats, they last easily up to 50, 60 years. And this particular grass again grows along the bank of uh, River Nila. Um, and then there are uh, communities who perform shadow puppetry, uh, communities who are into bell metal craft and so on. So how, uh, uh, how, how the... How can we see the river as an entire ecosystem uh, is something that we look at because uh, many a times, uh, like in, in the modern day, we just see river as sources of hydroelectric power or sources of uh, food, like for fish and so on. But there are like several communities and several lives and livelihoods that the river directly uh, supports or, or, or is connected to. So how can we uh, redefine our understanding of the river and the water? How can we uh, build our relationship with uh, the water that we consume or uh, that, that we need? So that is one of the uh, aspects of Nila Yatra. Uh, moving ahead, I uh, invite uh, Rahul, uh, uh, another co-creator, to uh, share about the next journey, Suraj Yatra. Uh, so Rahul had to drop. I think he got dropped out because of some internet issue. So uh, I'll take it forward, Ashik. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. Passing on down to Ashwini, who's the other co-creator of TU. Thank you, Ashik. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so uh, you're taking it forward. So this is uh, another yatra that we do. So basically, the idea of Saraj, which is the word which comes from self-fluid or self-governance, uh, uh, how do we reclaim it uh, by... Uh, uh, so we do it through visiting different spaces which are working on the idea of Swaraj, uh, the idea of self-rule and self-governance in different forms. Uh, so we visited uh, the village of Mendalekha, which has a consensus-based participatory democratic uh, process for taking decisions, wherein all the decisions are taken on the base of consensus and not majority voting. Uh, so the picture in the uh, in this slide that you see, Devaji, who is from Mindalekha, uh, uh, is there. And we had discussions with him around how uh, this consensus-based democratic process has evolved or came into being in Mindalekha. Apart from that, we visited spaces in Varda, which are working on different aspects of food, uh, eco-architecture, clothing, 
all based on the founding principle of Swaraj, all based on the founding principle of decentralization, localization. Uh, we visited Hemalkasa, uh, where we visited Dr. Prakash Ramte's hospital. Uh, apart from that, we went to a tribal village to understand their idea of how they are fighting for their sovereignty. Uh, so through these different places that we visited, the idea was to see how Swaraj or self-rule is working in the external world through the examples of the people, the individuals, the communities, the different initiatives that we met. And then through that, how can we internalize Swaraj for ourselves? Uh, so, we all, uh, so the outer travel is always facilitated with an inner travel, wherein we do group sharings, we do different processes with the uh, participants who comes for the Yatra. Uh, and the chart is one of the example of that. So uh, what we are looking outside, what does it mean for us in the inside is uh, the inner travel that we talk about. Uh, so. Through the Yatra, they were, the participants were able to identify what is the meaning of Saraj for themselves, what is the meaning of self-rule for themselves, how can they make informed decisions, what are the choices that they are making in their lives, what is the basis of these choices, where are the choices coming from, and multiple other aspects uh, connected to the self, uh, self-governance uh, aspect of uh, their own lives. Uh, so these are the two, two uh, complementary things that uh, that we focused upon in during this yatra and uh, it was a seven days yatra through most of mostly through the different parts of maharashtra uh, uh, for, uh, in the in, in the western maharashtra region uh, another yatra that we do is uh, it's a it's called the cycle yatra uh, basically where we travel for one week uh, in a group uh, without any uh, money we don't carry any phones we don't carry any gadgets neither any food with us and uh, we do basic we carry basic cycles uh, so the idea of this yatra is to uh, explore abundance that is in the nature to explore generosity uh, to explore our relationship with money and uh, uh, how how does our interaction without money or without any of the things that we consider essential how does that interaction with the rest of with the rest with the communities uh, uh, lands for us uh, so we travel through different villages and communities uh, we go to different spaces we uh, do uh, we ask for places to stay from the uh, uh, from the communities that we visit we ask for food we ask for whatever support that we need and also uh, the idea is to how can we go beyond uh, go beyond our ego and ask for help you know uh, so with the with the hyper individualized uh, world that we are living in, everything right now is focused on how can you get it uh, by through a transaction? How can you get it uh, by uh, you know? It's a give and take relationship. But here, what we are exploring is can we go beyond that? Can we go beyond the idea of scarcity? Can we explore abundance that is uh, there out in the nat uh, nature? And also, how do we define our relationship with money? Because uh, the idea of not having any money in the in your pockets and surviving for seven days in itself uh, is 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 a little radical for uh, for many of the applicants when they come for it. Uh, but when they go through this process, when they find uh, that they are being fed for, they are being taken care for, uh, the idea of also paying forward or the idea of also giving also emerges within themselves. Uh, and through uh, uh, through the yatra, we we'll also offer uh, whatever, uh, uh, whatever, uh, uh, as in uh, we call it shramdan in Hindi, whatever like labor of love that we can offer to the communities. It could be as simple as uh, cutting uh, the crops if it is the harvest season, or it could be as simple as uh, taking a session in the kids in the school, uh, depending on the context of where we are. Uh, but more, the, so it is more of a paying it forward, and it is more of a creating those connections, uh, creating uh, memories uh, for ourselves and for the people that we are part of. Uh, so the core ideas of uh, uh, connect, the core idea of love, the core idea of gift, uh, the core idea of uh, going beyond the transaction in a day to life, day to day life is what we explore uh, through the cycle yatra. And uh, through, through the yatra, we have seen the uh, change in people's perception of how they look at money, uh, the change in people's perception of how they look at asking for support or asking for help. 
uh, within from from their immediate community as well as from the uh, larger community. Uh, this is again a seven days yatra that we do, uh, starting with an orientation, ending with a reflection, and for five days of travel. Another program that we do, we do a workshop which is called Transition from Tourist to Traveler. Uh, and this has come from the need of people who want to do meaningful travel, who want to travel uh, using, who want to use travel as a pedagogy for learning, but they are not sure how to start or how to uh, initiate that journey of theirs. Uh, so, so, there are, uh, so the idea of the workshop is how can we travel in a slow way? How can we travel in a conscious way? And also how can we use travel as a learning tool uh, for ourselves. Uh, so it's a, again a seven days workshop wherein the idea is we facilitate it through the lived experiences of us uh, and the facilitators. Uh, so we speak about what we have been able to do in our life, how we travel, how we have created learning experiences for ourselves and share those with the participants uh, who can then uh, who can then take it, adapt it and how they want to uh, journey. Uh, but most important aspect is how do we uh, look at uh, from the eye of a traveler and not from the eye of a tourist? Uh, and how can we uh, share our gifts with the communities? How can we uh, create more meaningful experiences, more meaningful uh, learnings for ourselves as well as the people whom we whom we meet or the people or the places that we travel? And uh, and how can we leave those places more beautiful than we found it? You know. So those are the different aspects. Uh, that we touch upon during this uh, during this workshop. Uh, another program that we do is called travel sessions uh, because we we feel conversations are an important uh, aspect of learning. Uh, so with whatever experiences that we are able to uh, gather for ourselves through different programs, through our interaction with different people, through our interaction with different communities, this is a platform where we uh, share these different experiences of travel, livelihoods, the alternatives that we are part of uh, with uh, different different uh, groups of people. So we have done programs with different organizations. We have done programs with different schools, uh, colleges, and institutes. And this is also an introductory session of using travel as a pedagogue for learning for most of the colleges and institutions uh, that we visit. Uh, so here the basic idea is how can we introduce the idea of travel as a learning tool and then build upon it by engaging with them uh, uh, through different uh, through different forums online offline uh, as and when possible ashik yeah so so uh, summarizing of what how and why why we do it this is the theory of change that we work upon uh, so what we do we basically offer uh, experiential learning opportunities using slow and conscious travel. Uh, the how part of how we are doing it is we are giving the learners uh, access to the community of livelihood practitioners. So most of our programs, the communities that we visit, the people whom we meet are uh, practicing some or the other form of livelihood. Uh, through the different processes that we do, we facilitate learners to understand their true self. And we, when we talk about true self, as mentioned in the initially by Ashik, it is upon their about themselves, about the society and the rest of the nature. Uh, how can we connect with them? How can we understand our connection with them? Apart from that, we also provide opportunities to experience abundance in the society and the rest of the nature. Because right now, most of the systems that we are part of is forcing us to uh, from the scarcity framework. So how can we move from scarcity to abundance is one of the things that we found was very important for us. And that is what we also offer through our programs. And then an integral aspect of all our work is documenting knowledge. So we document the knowledge, the experience, and the learnings. And it is in two forms. One form is for the reflection of the applicants, of the participants who come for the different programs. So how can they uh, do the documentation for themselves to reflect on their learnings? And the other aspect is also sharing it out with the larger audience so that they are also able to connect uh, with, these, uh, with these different aspects. And all the documentation that we do is out in the commons. Uh, that is one of the principles by which we operate. Uh, that uh, we do not want to, uh, we, we, we do, not, do not want to create a documentation which is again for just for some people. Uh, so all the documentation is available on our website in different forms of blogs, uh, in books, uh, and uh, different articles form. 
uh, which can be downloaded for free of cost. Uh, and through this, what we feel is we are working on individual change, which can bring the collective difference. So since we work with uh, a lot of youth at an individual level, but uh, we believe that working with these individuals will lead to a collective difference. And this collective difference is towards creating a world which is more sustainable, which is equitable and just for everyone. Yeah, so with that, we close uh, today's presentation. Uh, we can move to the question and answer, but uh, uh, yeah, so so far we have shared about the short-term learning programs that we uh, offer and the uh, pedagogy of uh, those short-term programs. Uh, but we also offer an eight-month-long fellowship program for youth particularly interested in the pursuit of livelihoods, uh, which is called Tito Parinde Fellowship. Uh, so we will be going in detail into both the, the fellowship and the and the idea of livelihoods in the next webinar, which is on next Friday. Um, yeah, so with that we close the presentation, we can move to Q&A okay. interactions. Thank you so much for that, Ashik and Ashwini. You really presented a very, a very new way of looking at what travel and education can, how can they can interact together. So we're opening for questions now. Um, I will be moderating the session and uh, would be here will be helping with the raised hands and just letting me know if somebody is so has a question to ask so please go ahead Questions? Anyone? Uh, perhaps uh, if we have some time and there don't seem to be any uh, pressing doubts, maybe uh, Ashik and Ashwini, you can tell us about any of the upcoming plans that you have. Something I know that uh, the newest cohort of the of the Tiparanda Fellowship has turned up, but we'll talk about more about that um, next week. Maybe something like uh, how many people have gone through this and what is their feedback? Yeah, uh, so uh, through the different learning journeys and workshop, we have we have have we have, we have had just over hundred people participating, um, and so so we jokingly say uh, among ourselves that like one of the ways in which we measure the success of the program is like how many people quit their job or quit their studies after after journeying with us, uh, because like for, in, in each journey, at least one or two people have. Uh, either quit their job or like discontinue their studies for a, a, a short period uh, to actually uh, deeply explore what their real interests are um, and, and going yeah, really uh, deeper into it. Um, yeah, and, and we have seen uh, people having uh, greater trust in the world outside, like after, after going through the program, so especially Cycle Yatra. Uh, when one is on the road for a week without money uh, or phone or gadgets, um, like real connections are built without uh, without any phone and real uh, one experience real power in the community without any money in their hands. Um, yeah, uh, so so that that is one one change that uh, one shift that that we have seen in people. Yeah. Uh 
Add to that, like I, I think one of the things which we have seen, like connection and community, is one of the strongest things which people take, uh, from all of these programs because we have seen when, uh, people come to these programs, they are either in some kind of transition or they have a, uh, understanding of the world which is little different than what they are seeing out among their peers or among their friends. Uh, so the the uh, the spaces that we visit, the uh, community that we are able to create through this program, uh, through these different learning journeys and workshops, uh, it opens up a space where people can ha start having dialogues on these different forms, which is not being, uh, you know, talked about in the outside world, which is not being talked about uh, in in the in the mainstream. Uh, so so that space where a dialogue can happen, the space where they can get uh, more information on such initiatives leads to a change in the way like Ashik was saying how they look at the world and it also uh, we have seen that they are taking away a lot of hope uh, hope in this hope from the sense of okay uh, there are people there are individuals there are communities who are questioning the status quo and in question not just questioning but presenting alternatives for it presenting some different forms of solutions uh, which generally we don't hear in our day-to-day -day life and that is the uh, difference that we are talking about. Like when we travel, uh, that is the difference that they get exposed to, uh, which leads to this uh, kind of shift. Uh, fundamentally, at the understanding level, at initially, and then through different forms of engagement, which we have with some of the applicants, not everyone, uh, into action also. Uh, so, so the initiation of thought is where it starts, and then it leads to action. Uh, some of the people have converted from one program to another program. They have come from short-term program to long-term program. So that is the uh, that is the growth or that is the transition that we have seen in people. Do you want to talk about the Nila Yatra Ashik, which is upcoming? Yeah, uh, so we are hosting Nila Yatra again uh, this November, um, and we we are also like we, we meet with and like stay with different uh, communities whose libraries are directly connected to the river, like the water community, the weaving community, uh, the bell metal craft making community, the fisher community, um, and uh, many more. So directly living with them and uh, learning from them and understanding from them. Uh, the interconnections, intersections. Uh, Ufi has asked, is there any way in which this model or process can be adapted to other parts of the world? Well, we believe like travel is universal, travel and learning is universe, universal and we have like several uh, stories to, you know, to show that from say uh, Che Guevara to Anasam Hinwe uh, and like in India with Gandhi, like uh, how the travel has uh, played a very important role in um, both like self transformation and like outer transformation, uh, societal transformation. Um, yeah, so it uh, it definitely can be adapted. And something that we are working on currently at Travelers University is like how can we put out the designs of these programs out. Uh, so the the process of uh, engaging in uh, like a meaningful or intentional travel. Uh, so that is what we are working on currently so that people can take up these journeys by themselves uh, and like not wait for uh, like an organization or a community to do it or like facilitate it for them. Yeah, so how can how can that uh, learning uh, be like the, the, the know-how of it or the process of it can be out there in the comments. So that is something that we are working on. Uh, okay, I had a question as a just as, as a viewer. Um, how have your personal journeys impacted this founding? How have you how, how what experiences have led you to realize that something like this is both very helpful and very needed? Yeah. Uh, so far as it has been our personal journeys, which which brought us together, which uh, uh, brought us the idea of Travelers University. Um, so Rahul is not here, but I can share it, like from his experience because that was the beginning of uh, such a thought. Um, so Rahul in 2015-16, he traveled across India for a year and 
met with 52 different uh, practitioners, like, like good practitioners, people who had designed their own pathways. Uh, so that was the original 52 per in the gap year project. Uh, where, uh, so there are 52 weeks in a year, right? So each week he met with one individual, stayed with them um, and documented their stories. So there were largely two purposes to it. One, uh, to promote the idea of taking gap year, a uh, year off or a year on for one's own learning. And two, uh, to uh, celebrate the lives of people who had designed their own parts, uh, keeping in mind and uh, the like personal, social, and ecological being aspects. Uh, so like after the year long journey, Rahul's personal reflection was that uh, most of his life lessons came from the travel. So that is how uh, the idea of Travelers University came into being to be a platform uh, for more people to travel and learn, to travel and pursue the kind of uh, learnings they wish to have for themselves, travel and build the kind of skills that they wish to have for themselves and so on. And uh, the rest of us, also Ashwini, uh, me, there's another co-creator, Preksha. All of us, all of us, our, our journeys also happened uh, in a similar manner, wherein we traveled for our own learning. For So for me, it was, uh, I so before uh, this, I used to work with uh, municipal schools, uh, I mean, government schools uh, in Maharashtra. Um, and like my my differences with the school education system began there, and I was also exploring different alternatives to institutional learning, um, and uh, yeah, and so like for me, like I listed down a few different organizations initiatives working on education reform, and that was also uh, and immediately around that time, like I also met happened to meet with Rahul, um, and since these uh, and more people and places got added to the list. Uh, but since these people places initiatives were across different parts, uh, travel was like necessary, like movement was necessary. Um, and for me, I found that uh, during the journey, uh, during like one, there is there is definitely a, a huge component of directly learning from practitioners. Uh, but along with that, the the movement uh, like uh, in the in the bus or in the train, that helped me uh, to be with my own self, to help me reflect on uh, the experiences that I had, uh, to help me reflect on the, uh, on the learnings that I had, thus like helping to, you know, to strengthen the learning even further. Uh, so yeah, so it is very much uh, a lot of our personal experiences that, uh, that led us to building Travelers University and which continues to, uh, uh, you know, um, Build, build, build our, build our like ideas for the yeah. Ashwini, maybe you can. Uh, so for me also it has been a journey of uh, like I it's for me it's a journey of trying out different things, quitting things, and then uh, things which does weren't working for me in a personal life. So how to transition and go beyond and then try out something new. So it has been that kind of a journey. Uh, but travel played a huge part in my life in the sense because uh, one of the major part of my professional experience has been working with artisans and that took me to different uh, rural communities within India wherein I learned a lot about the art definitely but more than about the art, uh, about uh, my own self, uh, about uh, the reality of grassroots. Uh, I understood my privilege, my privilege, privilege of language, my privilege of class, caste, uh, the economics uh, that I'm part of uh, through my these experiences. Until and this, it was more of a theoretical understanding, but the experiential understanding happened uh, during these visits by uh, the interaction with the artisans, with their families, with their children. And that shifted a lot for me. I think uh, that shifted or that made me think about what is my role, what is my role going to be in this world, what is the kind of life that I envision for myself. Uh, and that led to also a lot of questions about uh, questioning the systems, uh, questioning the systems like as simple as who decides who gets paid for what, you know, who decides whether the uh, work done by mind is more valuable than work done by hand. And this came from these experiences that I found on the field. And this led, one question led to other question 
started uh, leading to questions around, you know, what is the education system that we are part of, the economic system, the class system, the caste system. Because I was seeing it day in, day out. I was seeing it uh, literally happening in front of my eyes. And there was no way of unlooking it or no way of uh, just uh, putting it back in the back of the mind. Uh, so those things led to different kind of experiments that I did within my life within and that finally led to Travelers University because I, I and Rahul had worked before in an NGO uh, and we knew what kind of worldview we had, we knew what kind of understanding we had and we also uh, identified travel as a tool uh, which can create a lot of self-learning, I, I would say, and, and then it is something which can be offered to the outside. Uh, so mo so it has been that process. It is still a process. It's a long. It has been a journey of understanding myself, understanding my uh, relationship with the systems, and at the same time also offering what we have been able to learn, what we have been able to experience in different forms of programs, uh, which can then lead to uh, little bit, which can lead then lead to different kind of growth in different kind of people who are also searching for such kind of pathways, who are also looking for. Uh, such kind of stories or uh, such kind of lives that they want to live. Uh, so yeah, so that way it has been like uh, for each one of us, uh, the questions that we carried with us, the pain points that we had within our lives, we somehow made it a program and made it a design and, you know, offered it uh, to the outside world. Thank, thank you so much, both of you. Um, we really appreciate your presence here. And uh, we're, we're very excited for our webinar next time because we'll be able to get in much deeper into something that's very, I mean, the Vitu Parande Fellowship is a very interesting space and I can't wait to delve into it with you. Um, for now, uh, Ashik has popped in the link to the Travels University website in the chat box. Um, I've also popped in some of the things that GTA has been doing um, along with uh, just transcripts and everything. Um, I'm sorry, just one second. Uh, does anybody have any last minute questions, something quick maybe? Um, can we know more about your upcoming programs? Uh, yes, so we've got, um, I'm sorry, actually, uh, Shristi, if you can tell us more about that. Um, I'm sorry if your, uh, if your microphone is working. I guess it's directed to uh, Ashik and Ashwini about Travelers University. Yeah, so the upcoming programs at Travelers University, like uh, as I shared earlier, like we are having Nila Yatra, the, uh, the, it's an eight day journey on human river interconnectedness uh, in the southern state of uh, India, which is Kerala. Uh, we are having it in November. Um, and uh, like the fellowship uh, program, which we'll be going in detail about in the, the pedagogy of which we'll go, be going in detail about in the next uh, webinar. Um, we have just started the third cohort. Uh, so we have completed two cohorts and uh, the third cohort has just started. Uh, we haven't planned any other programs yet, uh, but like there will be like more of Cycle Yatra and we are looking forward to connecting with institutions and uh, doing these programs for institutions. So that's a possibility that we are checking at the moment. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be doing uh, the river journeys and the Swaraj Yatra with schools and colleges. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if it's on GTS upcoming programs, maybe Sushte, you can answer. Yeah. <laughs>
and we can have both. Uh, so about the GTA, um, we recently had our, um, our first physical assembly. So a lot of things are going to come out of that really exciting gathering. Uh, I don't know why my chat box just refuses to work. So one of my other co-hosts will be putting all of that in the chat box as well. Uh, we'll be, we've just published our first volume of our new series, um, Regeneration. Um, Regeneration and Resilience. Uh, it's seven stories of um, alternatives that are prevailing against the, the crises that are across the world right now. And um, as Ashwini has mentioned, they, you can also sign on to the Travelers University mailing list in, the, in their website. Um, well, we've also published a periodical in the last month, which is a more general periodical just updating everybody about what's been going on with uh, both the weavers and the endorsers and of course individual articles um and our next periodical will be on weaving and how we actually understand that um in light of our recent physical assembly uh Ashishti has also published the gta website in the chat box um okay um if anybody else has anything to add All right, uh, this was a very informative session. Again, thank you so much, uh, Shaik and Ashwini, and um, obviously Rahul as well. Uh, we, we are very excited to see you next week. Uh, same time, same um, same day, Friday at 1 p.m. UTC, um, yeah, uh, universal time. And have a, lovely, have, have a lovely day or evening, wherever you all are. Uh, goodbye for now. See you next week. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And we'll also be having some of our fellows joining us uh, in the next session. Thanks, everyone.